Welcome to the podcast that focuses on simplifying your TIAA accounts. Your host, Greg Shepard, is an independent fee-only financial advisor that specializes in helping folks in higher ed get the most out of their TIAA accounts. Hey there, folks. Greg Shepard here, and welcome to my rebranded podcast, formerly known as Higher Ed Retire, now going forward, known as TIAA Strategies with an independent expert, that expert being me, Greg Shepard. So the purpose of this rebrand is to really open the door, open the window, open the opportunities for those outside of higher education, like hospitals, you know, your healthcare workers, nonprofit, or any industry out there where you find yourself with TIA accounts, my job, my goal is to distribute strategies to make those accounts simpler. Okay, bottom line, we're trying to make those TIA accounts simpler. I've been doing this for 20 years. Again, Greg Shepard, I do have an investment management firm here in the Kansas City area, fee only. But with the advancements of technology, I'm able to help folks all over the country. This episode today, it's a little, oh geez, how do I say? It's a little unique. Not, oh, that's not the right word. It's not unique. It's uh, a little specific. Let's say that. It's a little specific to those that are reaching RMD age. And I think this scenario would lend itself to those that have separated service, retired, and have chosen the five-year fixed period option, uh, the payment option from that TIAA traditional. Okay, so before we get started, as always, I'm going to recite this one sentence that magically keeps the attorneys at bay. Investment advisory services offered by me, Greg Shepard, as an investment advisor rep of SNA Financial Services, a registered investment advisor. Okay, before I kick this episode off, I want to let you know if you want to see about simplifying your TIAA accounts, by all means, go ahead and feel free to contact me. I talk to folks just like yourself all over the country just about every day. The easiest way to get in touch with me is Greg, well, it's my email, greg at Shepherd Financial. that's G-R-E-G at S-H-E-P-A-R-D, financial.com. Some of you have actually resorted to the phone call. Yeah, the, re- the archaic form of communication that is the telephone. That number is 913-521-2381. Again, 913-521-2381. Okay, folks, I'm going to, I think the best way to go about uh, explaining what I'm trying to coherently and, in, and intelligently explain is to give you a real case scenario. So hang tight. Jot down some notes, and again, if you get uh, in the weeds or just overwhelmed, confused about this topic, by all means, shoot me an email. We'll get you squared away. Now, I'm going to preface before I get into the real case scenario that yours truly, okay? Now, I've done this for 20 years, and yours truly made this mistake years ago, okay? So the reason I mention that is even um, the most seasoned veterans, and I can prove that with my gray hair, dealing with TIA, make these mistakes. So it's pretty difficult for those out there like yourself navigating these tricky waters that is TIA to go unscathed (laughs) through some of these more treacherous strategies. No, this one's no exception. So fast forward to now. So here's what's going on. Uh, One of you out there listened to my pod, I can't recall, listened to the podcast or watched the YouTube channel uh, and reached out to me. Now, it was a little too late after this individual reached out to me. But we are going to rectify the problem as as seamless and painless as possible. So this individual uh, down in Arizona, okay, was at a, a higher ed institution, separated service, i.e. retired at 71 years old. His goal with his GRA account, okay, so we had TIA traditional and a GRA account, uh, off memory here, around $200,000 in that particular account. He wanted uh, to liquidate that TIA traditional as quickly as possible. Perfect. Okay, that sounds great. No problems there at all. So one of the options afforded to him with that GRA account is that he can elect to do the five-year fixed period payment option. And he was going to direct those payments, which are monthly, over to his rollover IRA. Coincidentally, he's custodying holding his assets over Charles Schwab. And I say coincidentally, because that's where I hold my client's assets outside of TIA as well. So everything's great. He uh, submitted the paperwork with the help from the good folks over at TIA. 
Now, I will interject with this. And I've told folks out there time and time again, this has happened to me, uh, and it's happened to many of you folks out there as well. If you don't ask the exact question, typically, and I'm saying typically, if you don't ask the exact question needed in order to avoid this problem and other problems similar to this, you won't get an answer from Tia. Do you see what I'm getting there? So they're not most of the time, okay? I'll say sometimes or most of the time, however you want to word this, they're not going to come out and say, hey, did you think about this? Um, you know, what about this? You know, your age, when you get to RMD age, this will happen. None of that came about, which irritated slash frustrated this uh, employee, ex-employee. And also that, that's, a, that's, a, that's what happened to me. You know the old adage, you don't know what you don't know. Uh, well, it only takes once, and then you know, and then hopefully you won't make that mistake going forward. So that is the case with this individual. Didn't ask the particular question, wasn't told the information, and here we are with uh, this issue that ensued. So again, 71 years old, uh, retired, separated service, same thing in this situation. Elected the five-year fixed period payment option, rolling those monthly distributions over to his rollover IRA, non-taxable event. Everything's great. Well, guess what? He hit RMD age. So any of you out there, quick quiz here. Now, do, do not respond with the answers because it's impossible through a podcast episode. Anybody know what happens when you hit RMD ages, RMD age, singular, with any type of fixed period payment from TIA traditional less than 10 years? Well, those payments automatically start going to the individual made out to their name, okay? So this individual, uh, the payments were going to rollover IRA, hit RMD age. Well, guess what? Come October of 2023, that's when he hit RMD age, he got his first check from TIA. Uh, we'll call it $4,000, okay, just to make the math simple here. So we got a check for $4,000 from TIAA made out to him. He kind of thought nothing of it at the time. You know, he hit RMD age, it's towards the end of the year, he figured it was just a one-off issue, had something to do with his, with his RMD age. He went ahead and deposited it and went about his merry way. November 2023 rolls around. Same thing. Got a check for $4,000 made it to him. Again, you know, he's a busy guy, even in retirement, a busy guy, didn't want to deal with it too much, um, and deposited that check. We well, can kind of guess where I'm going with this. December rolls around. Guess what happened? Same thing. So he gets a check for $4,000. Now, he's a smart enough guy to realize that, hey, what's going on here, first of all? But this most likely is going to be taxable income. And by the way, he already has RMDs coming from his IRAs over at Charles Schwab. So he gets this uh, check in December. Not only is it most likely, as he's thinking here, most likely taxable income, are they withholding for those taxes? And how does this incorporate with all of my RMDs I'm taking? So he gets on the horn, uh, which is the phone, and calls TIAA. He got some conflicting information. And what I mean by that is that he called twice. I think maybe even three times. It may, I, I know for a fact he called twice and got some conflicting information. Once he was told that all it took from his standpoint to rectify or fix the issue was to send in a LOI, which is a letter of instructions, telling TIAA exactly what's going on, all the information included in the LOI, and to redirect those payments back to his uh, Charles Schwab account. And of course, they also told him, hey, you can tell us verbally as well, but he wanted to make sure he had his ducks in a row, so he wanted to gather all the information. So we hung up in, uh, with the game plan of calling back. Well, he did call back and you know asked the exact same question and got a different answer. Okay, now... This kind of led him astray, uh, a little skeptical, a little pessimistic about what's going on. So he went to that Google bot and started Googling all kinds of stuff, ran into either my uh, podcast or YouTube and said, hey, this is him speaking to himself. Hey, this guy at least sounds like he knows what he's talking about, referring to me. Let me give him a call. Or actually, he emailed me. And uh, let me see what he thinks, he being me. And so we got in touch with each other. Uh, I knew instantly in the email, what was going on. And I, just because past experience, right? I went down this road with a client and I will never forget, you know, years ago uh, when that happened, I, I, I never made this mistake going forward and I never will going forward either. So I knew instantly what was going on. Um, I emailed him and said, hey, we need to get on the phone and, and uh, I'll enlighten you as to what go, what's going on. So here's what transpired. This is kind of how this puzzle 
was put together, okay? It got a little a little in the weeds. So again, hang with me. And if you find yourself in a situation, it might be best probably just shoot me an email or give me a call and we can figure out your situation as well. So he has to continue those RMDs, okay, from Tia. I want to make sure I don't parse or, or mince any words here. So when, when you hit that uh, RMD age, in this case with a five-year fixed period payment option, those checks go to him on a monthly basis. You can't stop that. That's irrevocable, okay? We're going to estimate these, these numbers to try to make the math simple. That was $4,000 monthly going to him. Five-year fixed period option, okay? He started that two and a half years ago. So he's got two and a half more years to go, right? Makes sense. Monthly basis. Let's also remember he has his RMDs over at uh, Schwab paying on those, those, those monthly payments as well. And it was around $4,000, just coincidentally. All right, so what we've done essentially is doubled his income. He doesn't want it, okay? He doesn't want it, even though we're, we are withholding for taxes. I say we because he's now a client, but at the point he wasn't. So I'll just continue saying we. Uh, we were withholding taxes, so that was, really wasn't a huge issue, but he just didn't need all this money, and he wanted it invested in growing for him. So we, um, I say we, literally me and the client, contacted his accountant, okay? Now, I already knew where this, this, this uh, conversation was going to go because of my past experience, but um, just to make the client feel comfortable, we included the CPA. CPA had a pretty good idea, which, by the way, I thought of years ago, and I knew it wasn't going to work, <laughs> but his idea was, hey, let's go ahead and stop the RMDs from Charles Schwab, Obviously, we're going to continue the, R, not RMD, but payment from the five-year fixed period payment option from the TIA traditional. Therefore, that exceeds his RMDs for all of his accounts that he needs to take, and that's going to satisfy his RMDs for his, uh, for his IRAs at Charles Schwab. Sounds great, right? Can't do that. Now, the reason you can't do that is because that TIA traditional that was turned into that five-year fixed period payment option is not subject to RMDs, okay? And if you think about it, to make it simple, you know, I think it was around, uh, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars. Once you turn that spigot on and start those payments, you're annuitizing that whole amount, 100% of that amount. You're not taking a portion of it for RMD's sake, so 100% of it's getting paid out monthly over the course of time. Hopefully that makes sense. So that exceeds his RMDs, for what he needs to take, satisfy over it, uh, in this case, his Schwab rollover IRAs. Now, I have looked through, analyzed, taken apart, talked to other folks, these IRS codes regarding what accounts. Let me back up a little bit and confuse you even more. Absent of this situation, if you out there have, let's say, 10 different IRAs subject to RMDs, you could take the RMD total amount from one account and to satisfy all 10 IRAs, okay? You can do that. So the CPA kind of injected that, that train of thought with this scenario as well. But as the IRS states that I found out the hard way years ago, you can't commingle accounts that aren't of like registration. In this case, again, to make this conversation simple, it was like a 401A with that GRA or a 403B and uh, also we're taking RMDs from his IRAs. So you can't satisfy your IRA RMDs from like a 401A from an employer. Hopefully that makes sense. Bottom line here, guess what? When he became a client, we had, this, we had to keep taking RMDs from both TIA, well, I say RMDs, but the payments from TIA, and the RMDs from Schwab, essentially doubling his income for the next two and a half years. Now, hang with me. So what I did is I instructed him, I advised him, and what we're currently doing is, yes, we're going to take those RMDs from Schwab because we're mandated, of course, by the IRS. But instead of you taking it as income, what we're going to do is journal those payments to your trust account that you have with your wife. And if you don't have a trust account or a spouse, you can create a TOD or any kind of taxable individual account. Most folks will create a TOD, transfer on death, and you can do the same thing. Now, we're still going to pay taxes on those distributions. It's still income, but we're going to direct those funds to his trust account with his wife, essentially a joint account, 
and we're going to put those monies inside certain investments. They were interested in some tax-free stuff, not investment advice here, nor is any of this tax advice. And we're going to let that grow until that five-year fixed period payment option has been exhausted. Okay? And then we're going to redirect those RMD payments from his Schwab rollover IRA back to him personally for income. Okay, so he, from a balance sheet perspective on his bank account, is getting 4000 a month for the next two and a half years from TIA. And then once that's exhausted, we're going to redirect those Schwab uh, payments, those RMDs, to him as well to continue that $4,000 payment from the RMDs. Gosh, I hope that makes sense. I know I'm kind of tripping over my words here. And he was okay with that. Now, going back to the TIA, uh, the TIA distributions, what we found out with this individual, um, I had to call Tia and figure this out. It's not too difficult. They were withholding uh, for Fed. They're mandated to withhold 20% uh, for Fed. He lives in the state of Arizona, which doesn't have very high state taxes because they got a lot of tourism stuff, tourism activities that pay for a lot of stuff down there. So their state income tax is a little lower. I think it's like 2.5%, 3%, something like that. So Tia was not withholding for state. So you have to call Tia and request the form that you'll submit to TIA that will indicate the amount of state taxes you want withheld, okay, if your state obviously has state income tax. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if, you, if you run into this problem, they're not withholding for state. You have to physically call them, ask for the form, and then indicate how much you want withheld for the state. Now, hindsight. How could you avoid this? I do not have a clue unless you have someone in your corner quarterbacking this scenario because the reason I say I don't have a clue is that this individual, very intelligent individual, didn't know, didn't know to ask this question when he told Tia that he wanted to do the five-year fixed period option. Now, also keep in mind, you know, to be fair, it's not like he had this long conversation with Tia regarding the situation. He found out what his options were Okay, and he wanted to liquidate that account as quickly as possible, absent of the 2.5% penalty strategy. And so that's what he did. I mean, it's a great, logical, intelligent decision. And I'll go back to the adage that I just hammer home to folks all the time when it comes to TIA. You don't know what you don't know. So this wasn't too catastrophic. But folks, think about what if that GRA account had $500,000 in it? Six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars in it. All of a sudden, you got a pretty big um, problem. I guess you could call it. I don't know what other word you would call it. It, it it'd be an issue. Now, luckily, it was it was two hundred thousand dollars, which is a large amount of money, of course, but it didn't create huge uh, tax or logistical issues. You got you just got to kind of finagle the puzzle a little bit. And of course, when you have someone that has some experience, whether it's a TIA advisor or someone that has experience with these kind of accounts that can really be advantageous to your situation. Man, I hope I didn't confuse everybody out there. It's a very confusing scenario. So again, if you want another set of eyeballs on your situation, by all means, feel free to contact me. Best way, most likely, is going to be that email, greg at shepherdfinancial.com, G-R-E-G at S-H-E-P-A-R-D, financial.com, phone number 913 913- Five two one two three eight one. All right, folks, that's all for this episode. TIAA Strategies with an independent expert. Hey, go out and take control of your retirement today. Take care, folks. Thanks for listening to the TIAA Simplified Podcast. Just because this episode is over doesn't mean you can't continue your TIAA journey. Please visit www.safinancialservices.com to see how you can work with Greg. S&A Financial Services is a registered investment advisor. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, or investment strategies. Investments involve risk and, unless otherwise stated, are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor and or tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein. Past performance is not indicative of future performance.